Welcome. So this week our Torah portion is Bo or Come, as we continue on in the story of the Ten Plagues. So as we move on, we come to understand another importance to these ten plagues, and that is to show our descendants about all of the wonders and the signs that Yahweh revealed and used and showed mankind in Egypt to free us, his people. Now, it is a physical testament to implement into all of us that Yahweh truly is our Adonai, thus Akkad, the one and only. Now, as all these wonders were shown, it still wasn't enough to have Pharaoh in the will of Yahweh to release his people, that thus what would follow next would be a plague of locusts so complete that you would not even be able to see the ground in front of you through the dense cloud of locusts. Now, if you were on or in Egyptian at that time, now, on top of that, understand this. What is it that locusts do? Yes, they devour. And whatever crops survived through the previous hailstorm, few as it was, would now be truly devoured by the swarm of locusts because Yahweh provides the blessings of the world. Thus, when you are not with him, you are dead. Now, even at this point, Pharaoh's servants noticed all the wonders of Yahweh and asked Pharaoh to let the Israelites go to worship Yahweh. Why? Because, see, they could not fathom any more that would come their way on Pharaoh's account. They seen that Egypt was being destroyed. Matter of fact, it probably looked like an abandoned, destroyed, desolate area such as how Syria looked after the war. So now, it was when Pharaoh summoned from Moshe and Aaron and told them that they could go worship Yahweh. But this time he gave them a dilemma. You see, he said that only the men can go. Why? Because he feared that if they all left, meaning family and spouse alike and children, that they would not return. But now remember that this is not what Yahweh wanted. You see, he called for all of his children to worship him. And what followed next was Adonai telling Moshe to reach his hand over the land of Egypt to present the locusts to destroy every plant in the land. Now notice how Moshe calls they went from the east, or the east went to bring in the locusts to Mitzrayim. Do you see this big picture from Yahweh? That he... Even the simplest things in this world to bring in the biggest measures is what he uses. As many say that we are not in the end times, notice how it creeps up on you without you even noticing it. As with just the east wind. So too is it happening now in this world at this present time. With the vulgar language and explicit acts on present time TV just to name the least. Programming to say that the end times has snuck up on us is something that you could definitely look to. A time of, as Yeshua states, lawlessness and selfishness. Now, after all the locusts, Pharaoh once again asked Moshe to intercede to Yahweh to remove the locusts, and thus he did it. By doing the reverse. Instead, now he used a west wind to turn them to die into the sea of Suf. Now, once again, Pharaoh was hard hearted and Yahweh returned his actions with three days of darkness upon Egypt. Now, it's also been said that with the three days of darkness, it was also because of the fact that with the Egyptians, they were careless to see anybody else but their self. And like they had brethren that was around them and they were in such dire need of things. They were struggling. They didn't have these things. And 
these Egyptians would just look past them and not even notice them, basically, because they were too involved into their own selfishness and their own self that they didn't see the person right next to them was struggling and needed their support and help and guidance. So this was also to do with that fact. Since they were covered in darkness and seen nothing else around them except their selves, their own little world, then this darkness meant nothing because it was just showing the actual actions of how they were. So with the three days of darkness upon Egypt, except that even though it was upon Egypt, the Egyptians, all the Israelites who had the light of the world, Yeshua, Yahweh with them, and thus they all had light. Now, what was next was Pharaoh asked for Yahweh's help through Moshe to remove this darkness. So again, after this, Pharaoh became even more hard-hearted and would not let the people of Yahweh leave along with their livestock. Now, Yahweh was not going to have this either. So he now tells Moshe that he has one last plague and that after this, Pharaoh will let his people go. Now, here comes the warning to Pharaoh that all the firstborn in the land of Egypt will die. Yahweh also had Pharaoh forewarned of the fact that his people, meaning Pharaohs, would prostrate themselves before Yahweh and ask him to get out his people from all of Egypt. Now, after all of their firstborn and their livestock's firstborn having been killed, now also did Yahweh tell Moshe that to fully get at Pharaoh's hard hearted heart that he would also have to perform some more miraculous miracles soon. So next, Adonai told Moshe and Aaron that he is giving all his people a new calendar. Thus, they are to begin their calendar with this month, as it will be the first month of the year for them. And thus was given, beginning on the 10th day of the month, thus following with the unblemished lamb that they are to keep until the 14th day of the month, and then they are to slaughter it at dusk. They are also to smear its blood on the two sides and top of its door. Now get this. This is the sign of the Hebrew alphabet, our word tav, which also means cross. So to say that they had this as a sign, that they worshipped and served Yahweh and believed in him, as we too use the cross as a sign of faith in Yeshua, who is our high priest that makes offerings on his, our, of his body to our Yahweh. And Yahweh gave them the Peshach, our Adonai's Passover, which would lead to Yeshua as the perfect Passover lamb sacrifice. Now, Yahweh told Moshe that his people are to celebrate and observe Passover from generation to generation up till now until then. Continue as a feast of Yahweh along with the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which reminds us yearly to remove all of the sin or leaven from our lives and to remember how Yahweh took us out of Egypt from being slaves with a strong hand and made us his people. So thus, in reality, when you know somebody who's not observing the Feast of Unleavened Bread or Peshach, they are actually denying that Yahweh is their master. Because he told us to keep this as a sign because he took us out. He became our master after this. He restored us. He retrieved us and recovered us. So thus you are saying you are still living with the world in the pagan society. And thus he told us that with the seven days of unleavened bread, we are not to work on the first and the seventh day as these days are to be set aside for Yahweh. 
So soon Yahweh had his Nebuah, our prophecy, come to pass, and the blood on the door panel had the angel of Adonai pass over all the Israelites' houses, and to go to all the Egyptians, killing all of their firstborn. Now, as and after all of this, Pharaoh too had Moshe and Aaron summoned and told them, and all the Israelites to leave to go and worship Yahweh because they, the Egyptians, feared that what was left was for all of them to die. That was the only next step as the next act. Now, as they all did, as Moshe told them, the Israelites also went ahead and asked the Egyptians, as they were told, for silver, gold, and clothing. Thus, they were given whatever they requested. And the people of Israel traveled from Ramesses to Sukkot. Sukkot, our tabernacle in Yahweh's presence. So after this, Yahweh also gave them a law to offer to him all of their firstborns. Thus, they are to sacrifice any firstborn animal to Yahweh. Thus, Yisrael passed over the firstborn. So they are all to be his property now. But all donkeys are to be exchanged for a lamb as they were in Peer. Now remember that with Egypt's three days of darkness, it was a precursor for the world where there would soon be a time of three days and nights where the world will be in darkness as Yeshua rested in the cave. Now, the Hebrew calendar is based on the moon rather than the Gregorian calendar, which is based on the sun. And also remember that when the sun goes down, evil is in the dark. But the moon, as Yahweh's people, still have light every night by the light of the moon. And now for our half Torah portion. You see, Yahweh gave word to Jeremiah to let Israel know just as Yahweh did through Moshe to Israel and Egypt's Pharaoh about all that would come to pass because of the signs and all of the sins that were going around and on the land. So to say it's sins of the land. That is why Yahweh will restore his people in a time that they seek and call out to him that all enemies shall be devoured and overcome by Yahweh Though they think that they are winning, they shall surely see that it was all a farce. For Yahweh will save his people always and forever. And now for our gospel portion. Our gospel portion tells us that just as Yahweh showed all his enemies that he was truly Adonai, so too here. Does the evil of the world, a.k.a. the unclean spirits, that they too bowed down before Yeshua and cried out that you are the Ben, are the son of Yahweh. So too, they knew it. Now, this goes to show that all will truly know and admit that Yahweh truly is Adonai. Now he, Yeshua, also called out 12 disciples, or Shalach, sent out ones to spread his light to the world, our true gospel. But notice, he also gave them power to cast out demons, our evil spirits. Why? Because, see, they truly know that he is Messiah. As the only true way to cast out demons is through the name of Yeshua. Thus, having true faith in in him, that he could overcome and defeat anyone or anything as he is one with the Abba, as he is a deny. And now we will have the ironic blessing. May a deny bless you and keep you. May Adonai cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May Adonai lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom. This has been a weekly messianic Torah portion from Following Yeshua Ministries. For more information or for guidance, please visit 
www.followyeshuanow.com.